everybody, it's Friendly Neighborhood Uncle P here, and this week we are tackling 2006 for our horror movie superlatives, and if you're unfamiliar, this is a series where my friend Carl and I, we pick out a certain year of horror movies, and we go through all the movies released that year, and we pick out our categories. Most amazing, so bad it's good, most WTF, best score, most unique, most overrated, and most underrated. We've done this for the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and now we're tackling the 2000s with 2006 today. And if you like, after you watch my video, you go to Carlin's channel. I have a link in the description down below. Watch his video with the same name. And then, again, if you'd like, you can go to the community tab on his page and vote for who you thought had the better picks. Whoever had the better certification or maybe those clicks closely resembled your own. There's also a tie option. And most important, let us know where your picks are in the comments down below. We love reading those comments. It's all in good fun talking horror movies. Great. So, let's get started and pick out some horror movies of Pearl Tis for 2006. Starting off with Most Amazing, I went with Behind a Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. I think this film is a fresh take on the slasher subgenre. It offers this meta aspect that analyzes like horror icons like Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers. I do think this film did that whole meta aspect better than Scream ever could have hoped to have done because I'm just not a fan of the Scream franchise, so maybe I'm a little bit biased, but... I like the meta aspect of this film way more. It kind of like peels back the curtain on like the serial killer's journey from how he plans his murders to how he executes them. It's kind of self-aware and it plays with the, your expectations. It also is uh, in a mockumentary type style, which I do enjoy because I love found footage films. I like that kind of aspect to it. And uh, Leslie Vernon himself is oddly charismatic. And I find that weird because he almost comes off as likable. And you're not really supposed to be rooting for these serial killers, but we've all seen slashers. There are times we root for Jason and we root for Michael Myers. So this did that very well. You had a serial killer they still made somewhat charismatic and likable in certain ways. Um, I like the the film does pay homage to other horror films like Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. It's a love letter to genre. There's a love letter to the genre for the fans like us that we love horror movies. All kinds of Easter eggs in it, and like that makes it more enjoyable. Watching it a few times, oh, I didn't pick up that Easter egg and stuff. So it's a fun movie I really do enjoy. Underrated gem, I should say, for horror fans. And my most amazing horror film of 2006. So bad it's good. I'm going with WWE's See No Evil. Just like most so bad it's good movies, this movie has an absurd concept. Jacob Goodnight, a tarreling killer with an affinity for she got eyeballs. It's, a, it's over the top and it borderlines on ridiculous. And it's funny, when he pulls somebody's eyes out, his fingers go right towards the camera as if he's getting your eyeball out. So it's got a goofy aspect. It does star WWE's Kane as the villain, Jacob Goodnight, which is kind of silly. And it's just kind of fun, to, since I'm a wrestling fan for you know most of my life, to see how this pro wrestler trans, you know, transitions into horror movies. Because when he's Kane, he's this big, hulking monster, taller, bigger, stronger than everybody, silent but deadly, and you get that with Jacob Goodnight. So he's pretty much just playing himself. But that also makes the character come off a little funny, funnier than frightening, especially with the overtop kills in this movie. Because like, oh my god, that's cool. You're kind of cheering for him in ways because you cheer for him because... There's so many horror movie tropes in this film. That's another reason why it's so bad. It's good. you got Delinquent Teens, Creepy Hotel, Unstoppable Killer. Each character is so stereotypical, it almost feels like caricatures. And again, you want to root for the killer, and you want them to just die in brutal ways just because they're obnoxious. Moments that are meant to be serious in this film come off as awkward and cringy. Another requirement for a so bad it's good film. But it's fun to laugh at these films. Like one character while cleaning up the rundown hotel decides this was the time to just take a shower. Sure. It, it's just dumb. It's dumb. <laughs> but I enjoy it. The movie's bully character, uh, Michael, is pretty much less intimidating than McLovin from Superbad. Because it's just borderlines and caricatures. That's why I just think it's so good. And it, it makes a great choice for the best so bad it's good horror film of 2006. My most WTF selection goes to Slither. Slither has to have some some of the most disgusting and outrageous body horror you see in 2006. The transformation scenes are really gross. You got parasitic slugs, exploding bodies, and it just kind of like, it, it pushes you to the edge. Like, what the hell am I watching? Um, there's a weird tone in this film that kind of combines slapstick humor with 
horrific visuals. But that's what James Gunn is so good at. He's got a knack for dark comedy how it, with these overtop scenarios, graphic visuals, and it kind of makes you laugh one second and wince the next, creating that WTF feeling. Michael Rooker as Grant Grant, and that's his name, which is also kind of WTF in a way. His transformation to this goopy monster overlord blobby slug thing is just kind of unsettling. Because maybe like, well, what would happen to me? How would that feel? And he's all into it in the film, which adds to the absurdity of it. This movie borrows heavily from B-movie classics like Night of the Creeps and The Blob. And it just turns that absurdity up to 11 and it just takes you on a fun ride. You know, you get a nice blend of retro horror with, you know, modern sensibilities in it that really come off as outlandish. That's why I picked it as my most WTF fic for 2006. Because James Gunn, he knows how to grab a hold of the audience and make you think WTF is going on. But never in a bad way, in the fun part of WTF that sticks with you after watching movies like Slither. And for best score, of course, it's going to be Hatchet. When I was looking for the list of horror movies released in 2006, as soon as I saw Hatchet, I knew that was my pick for best score. The movie has so much fun gore in it. The use of practical effects makes this film just a pure joy to watch. I can't show you all the kills here, but one of them is just so much fun. He pulls a woman's head open from her mouth and peels it back like the pop top of an old beer can. You get slapstick goofy kills in this movie, and but they're still enjoyable. It's the kind of gore that makes you feel it. It kind of makes you recoil in your seat and makes you yell out like, holy shit, what the hell did I just watch? I covered this movie on Nails in a Coffin, and here's a card up for you to check that out. And um, I like the Hatchet franchise. It's fun. They don't do anything new to the genre, but it's your typical Friday the 13th type of knockoff with great practical gore effects. And a standout for 2006. Like the tagline for this movie is old school American horror. That's exactly what you get. Brutal, violent, over the top, gory, bloody kills with gallons and gallons of blood that make you think back to those films in the 80s. So if you like all that stuff, you'll like this film. Best score of 2006. And for most unique, this one might be a stretch. But I'm going with Snakes on a Plane. Because, like, what else do you need? It's a movie called Snakes on a Plane. And it's exactly what you get. Snakes on a Plane. And it's even better because you get Samuel Jackson in it. I mean, the premise here, it kind of sounds like the parody of a disaster or a creature feature. And it's pretty much what it is. But the plot is simple and absurd, but it's played serious. And I think that's what makes it unique because it still somewhat works. Because what's so enjoy about this film is Samuel Jackson. Only he could have carried him, carried this movie the way that he did. I don't think if you had a different actor like Corey Feldman, he wouldn't be able to pull off this movie. But I would 100% want to watch Snakes on a Plane with Corey Feldman in the Sam Jackson role. But Snakes on a Plane, I think it's, it's a unique since it even before the movie came out, there was a huge buzz on the internet about it. You know, the movie called Snakes on a Plane. I think it's brilliant marketing because people are having to see what the heck this movie is about. It's kind of like a sci-fi mockbuster before sci-fi mockbusters really became a thing because they became so popular, like Anaconda versus Gatoroid and all that weird stuff. But we also did get one of the most infamous lines in horror history. I have had it with these freaking snakes on this mother freaking plane. From what I gathered, you know, I think that, that that was added in during reshoots and test screenings. Uh, the horror fans wanted more ridiculous moments. And that's what you get here. I mean, if you haven't watched Snakes on a Plane, it is worth your time. Just have fun with the absurdity of it all. I mean, it, it shouldn't work, and it does. It is enjoyable. It's entertaining and goofy and bizarre. But, yeah, just for all those reasons, I feel it is the most unique horror film of 2006. For most overrated, my pick is The Omen. If you look up the litany of pointless horror remakes, this one would be close to the top of the list. You know, they released it on June 6, 2006. You know, get it? 666. Yeah, but it just didn't bring anything new to the table. It felt, more felt like a marketing stunt rather than a meaningful reinterpretation or remake of the film. Because it adds very little to the 1976 version. It's almost a shot-for-shot -shot remake, but it doesn't have any, like, innovation or a fresh perspective. Damien looks like a dork and never comes off as sinister or evil like the kid in the original. Now, I'm not going to child actor. I just think the direction he was given was probably a little bit misaligned. 
Liev Schreiber and Julia Stiles, just both who are pretty decent, accomplished actors, their performances here are very flat and vapid, just empty. I think they were just, everybody was just pretty much just sleeping throughout this film. You know, they use CGI and it just really looks bad. And that CGI just takes the wind of any gore or violence that was in this movie. It just, there's no shock like the impaling scene. There's no shock like the impaling scene in a 1976 classic. There there are so many bad remakes out there, but films are trying to change too much, like the Prom Night remake. But at least they changed something. and that. But this one just felt so unnecessary because you didn't change anything. Everybody slept through it. The performances were dull and boring and empty. The use of CGI was just made to feel, made to make, really disconnected you from the film. Like, oh, yep, that's CGI. That ain't real. Because it really wasn't good CGI at the time. It was just bad and didn't, yeah. But I don't want to ramble. Yeah, easy pick for me. Most overrated horror film of 2006, The Omen Remake. And wrapping things up with, like Carl, I think the category has become my most favorite one to talk about. Most underrated. I'm going with, hear me out, The Wicker Man. Yes, the 2006 remake of The Wicker Man. Some people say it's the worst horror movie ever made, the worst remake ever made. Far, far from it. Nowhere near on the list like that. I think Nicolas Cage's performance, it, it kind of gives the film a very odd tone of not your typical horror movie. Maybe his performance can be a representation of his unraveling psyche throughout the film. Is a good mixture of dark humor and, you know, horror in this film. You know, you got the strangeness of the island, the eerie behavior, the cult stuff, you know, the surreal nature of the plot. It's just kind of like, I feel unsettled on that island. And I think Nicolas Cage is the way he portrays his anxiety, like with the tapes. You know, they think they're called like, everything is okay and he can't find the tapes. He's not worried about his EpiPen or nothing. He's worried about these tapes to help calm him down. As someone who deals with anxiety, I kind of get that. And, like, I'm anxious. I was anxious the first time watching this movie, putting myself in his position. Really strange and weird. You find out, you, you know, your ex, uh, one of your ex-lovers is over here. Then you find out you have a daughter. She's in trouble. You're trying to figure out what's going on. You can't trust anybody. Don't get me wrong. It is meme-worthy. There are some funny, funny parts, like, where he punches a bear. But that end, you know, after that whole not the bees part, which is kind of, which is, it's meme worthy. Come on. Not the bees! Ah! I love my eyes! But when he's looking up at that structure and he's like, oh my God. Oh God. Oh my God. It's kind of, I know, it's a little unnerving for me. It's a little unsettling. I don't know why I just find this movie entertaining i don't think it's as bad as everybody makes it out to be i think people want to jump on the bandwagon with this movie being that bad or the worst horror remakes it's not i like so i like this un, um underrated category because it's a film that some of us just the categories for films that we just find entertaining despite what more more people believe or feel about it and that's why i think it's underrated and give it another shot and just you know let loose with it and just have fun with the movie embrace the weirdness and the wackiness of this movie. I'm not saying it's the best horror movie ever made, but it is the most underrated horror film of 2006. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are all my horror movies and for 2006. Here's a quick recap of my selections. And don't forget to let Carlin and I know what your picks are in the comments down below. You can write it on one of our pages and then just cut and paste over to the other one. That's fine. And if you like, if you haven't done so already, you can go to Carlin's channel, link down below, and watch his video, same title, get his picks. Then, again, if you like, you can go to Community Tab Innings page and vote for who you thought had the better selections. All in good fun. And I know, I should have said this at the beginning, but please hit that subscribe button on both of our channels. We both put a lot of content every week. Pretty entertaining. It's fun. We put a lot of hard work into it. And if you're entertained even a little bit, you can just repay us by hitting that subscribe button. Free for you. Hit the notification bell as well. He puts out multiple videos a week. So am I. A lot of good time. I got a lot of fun stuff planned for October. So it's going to be fun when I watch The Houses October Built Part 2 for 31 days in a row like I watched the original last year. So a lot of good stuff coming your way. Thanks again. Take care of yourselves and each other. Until next time, I am your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete. And remember, with great kills, that must also come great nails.